Hi everybody, today we cooked butter chicken and naan bread. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. It's a Jamie Oliver recipe and you're going to love it. Chicken is tender, beautiful rich sauce. We've smoked the tomatoes. We've made homemade naan bread. I can't wait to eat it. All right, let's get cooking. Great. So we're making butter chicken and naan bread today. So this is all good. So I'm going to read through the butter chicken recipe uh, ingredients first and then I'll read through the equipment. Fantastic. I'm just going to put the chat on so that I can see the chat and you guys can chat away to me if you need to. Fantastic. So first thing is um, two to three chilies if you're using them. If you don't eat chilies at your house, that's fine and dandy. Just keep them out completely. Um, then you'll need some cherry tomatoes. I've got my cherry tomatoes here. Fantastic. You'll need some garlic. Where's my garlic? Yep, great. You can either use fresh garlic or the minced, ooh, the minced garlic. You'll need some ginger. I've got my ginger here. You need some garam masala, which is a spice. Great. I've just literally got the one from Woolies. Um, garam masala. You'll need some natural yogurt. You'll need some chicken breasts. Unless you're using vegetables. Is anyone doing a vegetarian version? No. Okay, fantastic. Uh, you'll need some olive oil. Great, got my olive oil. You'll need either some cashew paste or just simple tomato paste. So Jamie Oliver's gone a little bit fancy with the cashew paste, but we found that because it's a thickener, same thing. If you're never, if you don't eat nuts in your family or um, you just can't be bothered by, you know, we can't, there's so many jars of stuff that you can have in your uh, cupboard. The replacement is just to use tomato paste and that will give you a much more traditional flavour as well. You need some salt and you'll need some pepper. Fantastic. Now, in terms of equipment, you'll need a chopping board and a knife. Now, for the chicken, I'm using a nice big knife like this. Whatever knife you use um, to cut meat, I usually use my little Victoria Knox tomato knife, but every other thing, but not for chicken, I can't. All right. Or else what will happen is that it will tear the meat instead of slicing it beautifully. You'll need some measuring cups and measuring spoons. And my measuring spoons have gone AWOL, but I'll find them. No, they're not. They're here. You'll need a fry pan and the wider the fry pan that you have, the better, like a nice big sort of one is good. If you've got an, I'm using an electric one, but you don't have to do that, just a nice wider one. A wooden spoon or a silicon spoon, some tongs. And if you're using non-stick pans, make sure you use a non-stick um, utensils otherwise you if you use metal ones they'll scratch the non-stick and a nice big bowl fantastic all right and while we're here we'll read out the naan bread ingredients and utensils and that way we can easily just get straight into things all right you'll need two cups of plain flour so you don't need to do anything with it all we're doing at this stage is just making sure that we've got it. Where is mine? Yep, two cups. <laughs> You'll need some plain yogurt. You'll need some baking powder. I've just got some baking powder here. And you need some salt. Fantastic. And then for that, you'll need a chopping board and a knife, a nice big bowl. Um, a whisk or a metal fork. A metal fork will be absolutely fine. The measuring cups and the measuring spoons. 
an egg lifter or like a lifter to turn things over, a fry pan, and a separate one because your um, meat, your chicken will be cooking in one. You'll need a separate fry pan to um, cook your naan bread and you'll need like a plate or a um, or somewhere to store your naan bread when you cook them and a clean tea towel. Just got a clean tea towel ready for that one. All right, Ripperita, let's go. Beautiful. All right. If you're using scissors, I don't know why I said that. If you're using chilies, I want you to halve the chilies and de seed them. So if you're using chilies, halve them and de seed them. Let me know if you need help doing that. Great. I'm grating, I'm chopping, grating. I'm using that side of fantastic. How are you going, Lily? If you've got any questions at all, my darling, just ask away. So we're doing four cloves of garlic and six centimetres of ginger. If you grate your gin, your garlic, make sure that you wash your hands once you've done it because the oils can really burn your eyes, the fumes from the garlic. So just be really careful when you do that. Now, normally, that's a good question, um, Lily, that you just asked. So normally I would use a garlic press, but because... Um, because I'm going to grate the ginger, I've just thought I'll grate the ginger and grate the garlic. So take the time to smell how beautiful these flavours are. All of these flavours are going to be the basis of our sauce. Oh, you're right there, Al Al Alana. You got fumes. My garlic is a bit knotty. My ginger is a bit knotty, so I'm being I'm chopping off the woody bit. And you want to get as much of the garlic from the inside of your grater as well. So if you want to pop your knife up there or, depend, or just give it a nice little tap on the side just to get as much of that beautiful garlic because that is our beautiful flavour. Fantastic. All right, once, you, once you've done that, we just don't worry if you haven't, you'll, you, you'll be able to catch up. What we're going to do is we're going to start charring, charring is the word, um, our chilli if you're using it and your tomatoes over a non-stick pan. Now, you won't need to use any oil, so I'm just going to turn it up to a medium heat. And if you want to watch me do that first. So do if you're using chilli, I want you to char the outside of the chilli, the skin bits on the chilli first for about maybe for about two minutes and then you're going to add your tomatoes so all we're doing here and it might seem really strange but we want our skins to blacken because we're going to take the skins off in the end 
So I'm putting my heat over a medium heat of my, my pan over medium heat. Fantastic. And then I'm literally just going to pour my tomatoes in. So we're going to do this, we're going to keep stirring it around for about, well, it will probably be about four or five minutes all together. And, we, and they'll start to get little black spots on them. They're meant to. That's exactly what we want. So don't throw your pan away because you'll be putting that, putting your tomatoes and chilies back in there at the end. So the concept is just to keep stirring and you'll start to see the skin starting to wither or pull back and go wrinkly. Far away, Lily. Um, if you're doing the chilies, um, do you do them with the tomatoes? Remember I said put the chilies in first then after two minutes, then do the tomatoes. Perfect, yep, excellent. If it's too hot, turn your, your pan down. Like if it's really starting to blacken the whole thing. But if they're black, then take them off and pop them into your bowl. Once they're black, take them off, pop them into your bowl. Oops. All right, mine are done. And I'm just popping them into my bowl. We're at step five. So I'm just, I'm just trimming my chicken, just waiting for everyone to give me the thumbs up. Right, done, excellent. How's Emily going there? Oh, you've got your hand in <laughs> multitasking. Great, looks like we're all ready to go. All right, fantastic. Let me just wash my hands. All right, fantastic. So we're going back to our marinade. With step five says, Add the garam masala. So garam masala, we're doing one tablespoon of garam masala, and we're going to put that on top of our ginger and garlic mix. One tablespoon. Again, smell it. It smells amazing. Sprinkle more that on. And then four heaped tablespoons of yogurt. Four heaped tablespoons of yogurt. You can be quite generous with the yogurt.
Great. Don't put the um, yogurt away because we're going to use that for the naan bread. And then let's double check. We're going to need a pinch of salt. I would do quarter of a teaspoon of salt, quarter of a teaspoon. You can either measure it in your hand or measure it specifically. Quarter of a teaspoon. Uh, da, 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 five, one tablespoon. And quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. Quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. So we don't measure over the bowl, of course, if when we're mixing when we're measuring things out because we want, we don't want things to fall in. It doesn't matter if it goes onto the bench. And for some reason, my... Right. Oh, pepper up my nose. <coughs> And then stir to combine. So stir all of that around. What do we stir it with? Um, a spoon, a spatula. This wooden spoon is great. Yep. Uh, yeah, you, no, no, don't. That's an egg lifter. Hang on. <laughs> If you can use a spatula even or a spoon, Lily, that would be better. Fantastic. All right, one tablespoon of yogurt. We're doing four tablespoons of yogurt. Great. All right. So mine just looks like a funny sort of brown mixture there. Not very appealing. The smell it. It's beautiful. It's full of beautiful flavours. And then, and this is where it's a little bit different than um, your regular butter chicken because your butter, regular butter chicken, it's all about the diced chicken. So what, what the recipe here says is we want to score. So scoring is putting um, some deep cuts through the chicken breast, and that's going to help get the flavour inside the chicken and help the chicken to cook faster. So I'm scoring that. If you can see how that I've scored it, I've probably done it a little bit too deep, but great. And then you can put it straight into your marinade. If you want to just do diced, you're more than welcome to just do diced chicken. But this is just a different alternative. And I'm and the parts of the chicken that are thicker, I'm doing slightly deeper cuts. Now keep in mind what you're touching with your chicken. So if you put it on a bench or a workspace or a bowl, we're going to have to clean that with warm soapy water in a minute. So I'm using my knife and just cutting my scoring. And if you see any daggy bits of fat or gristle hanging off, just chop them off because nobody wants that. I thought I'd got all my pieces, but no. Great. I'm getting my bowl and I'm going to put that straight into my sink. Then I'm, you can either use your hands if you want to. I'm just using the spatula 
and we're going to get the marinade all mixed through the chicken. And we've got all of those little deep cuts that we've made in the chicken and we want to get that in there. Great. So two cups of plain flour. Two cups of plain flour. I'm just tapping the bottom of my measuring cup to settle my flour down a bit. Two cups of plain flour. Keep the flour out because you'll use that to roll it out a bit. One and a quarter cups of plain yogurt. One and a quarter cups. And this makes it nice and fluffy. Use the yogurt. One and a quarter cups. Um, is there actual butter in butter chicken apart from the cashew butter? Uh, no, that's interesting. No. <laughs> no, there's like in a regular, um, like if you were to buy, actually, Alana, do you want to read out the ingredients on the back of your court, your butter chicken? <laughs> Seeing you've got it there, we'll make it. Yeah, All right, so it. we've got our one and a quarter cups of plain yogurt. Then you've got two teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of baking powder. Two teaspoons of baking powder. I'm just sprinkling that across so it doesn't get caught up. And a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. A quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And then you can just start mixing your mixture together using a wooden spoon or a spatula. So you'll mix it for about 30 seconds and then you'll probably need to start using your hand. And for those that have been part of my class know that um, I only ever use one hand when I need so that I've got a clean hand and a dirty hand. So once it starts to look a little bit raggy and it's a little bit difficult to come together, then I suggest that you flour your hand so you don't get dough all over your 
head. So a little bit of flour on your hand and then start putting the dough together. So don't put it through your fingers like this. That's just the worst thing I can see. We've got to be really kind to the dough. And as we push it together, like I'm making this sort of action, as I'm pushing it together it will and turning it over, it will come together in a dough. Now, if it is too sticky, sprinkle it with some more flour. This won't take very long to do. Like mine is literally in a, in a ball already. I'm going to get my dough out on the board and my freshly cleaned knife. What if you've added too much flour? Well, I haven't, but it's just hard to... Um, okay. So what are you... <laughs> so I'll tell you what, it's okay if you think you've added more because when we go rest, it will go a lot softer. So that's okay. So once it's out on the board, what I'm going to do is just chop it into six pieces. You don't need to over knead it or anything like that. And then I'm going to pop it back into a bowl, or you can put it on a plate if you want to. Mm -hmm. Lily, you're muted. You need to mute, sweetie pie. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so I've got six balls of dough there. If you can see the six balls of dough. And then literally we're just going to let them rest. We don't need to do anything more with them for the moment. So once you're done, pop them at the side and we'll come back to our tomatoes. There's a lot going on here, but... While we're doing this, keep in mind that our chicken is starting to beautifully marinate and develop all those gorgeous flavours. So you've got your, yep, great. So you've got six balls of dough. You can do whatever amount that you want. The, the more balls that you make, the smaller that your naan bread will be, but, which is not a drama. Great, fantastic. <laughs> and then when you finish doing that, we're just going to peel the tomato skins from the tomato. So all I'm doing is I've just got a little tomato container and just peel as many off excuse me uh, hang on um as you can sorry darling girl um, julia you have to put the dough in the bowl you can put it back in the bowl or if you just want to put it onto a dinner plate you can do that as well okay thank you good girl so i'm literally just pulling the skins from the tomatoes. Now, at the end of the day, you probably don't need to do this, but this is, we're following the recipe. Oops, right. I'm, starting to, I'm starting to heat up my pan. So the next step is do, 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 step seven. Step seven. Add half a tablespoon of olive oil to the pan and then add the chicken. Cook for 10 minutes, turning halfway. So I'm going to add some oil to my pan. And then I want to use some tongs.
I'm using all the marinade and putting it into the pan. Oh, it smells amazing. All right, I'm going to take my chicken off. Remember, it's not cooked yet. I'm just going to pop it in a bowl at the side. And then you can add your tomatoes. You can add your tomatoes, your chilies, and your cashew butter if you're using that or tomato paste. I'm going to add a can of diced tomatoes as well. Cashew paste, just two tablespoons of cashew paste. So two tablespoons of cashew paste or two tablespoons of tomato paste. If you've got an extra can of tomatoes at home, you can throw those in if you want to. And then we're going to add... cup of water. A cup of water. So I'm going to add half a cup and then I'm going to start stirring. And we're picking up all the crispy bits from the bottom. bubbling away, turn the heat down and then you can add your chicken back. And all the beautiful juices that came from the bottom. Now that's a better colour. Where is she? Yeah, Lily, that's a better colour um, butter chicken, isn't it? Getting there? <laughs> Great. All right. Now. I don't know if I added too much water or not. I don't know. Right. You've added too much water. Um, you might need to just add more tomato paste. Okay. Yep. Or... If using cashew spread, add another tablespoon of cashew spread because that will thicken your sauce. 
Then if you've got a lid, put a lid on top of your, your fry pan or some uh, foil, a lid or some foil, just because what we're wanting to do now is we're just wanting the chicken to cook all the way through. So we've got the beautiful crispiness on the outside. So we've got our beautiful bread here and I'm going to sprinkle my board with some flour. And if you pick up your first piece of bread, you can feel that it's a lot softer than it was and a bit more stickier. So you'll definitely need to cover it um, with a bit more flour. All right. And then I'm going to, and I'm rolling my rolling pin as well. So if your little naan bread is a bit sticky, sprinkle it with some flour. And so when I roll, I forgot to do that. When I roll, I roll outwards and then I turn it because we don't want the shape of Australia for our naan breads. We want them to be round. So to do that is we roll it, turn it, roll it, turn it. Now, just remind you, you don't want to cook these until just before you're going to eat. So when your chicken is all ready to eat, and if you want to cook anything else, as I said, you can cook a raita, you can cook um, a little tomato dish, tomato salsa. You can slice up some cucumber. So I'm rolling my dough out one way and then as soon as I've rolled it one way, then I turn it and then I roll it another way. And I usually have to, if with a soft dough, I, I hang on to, so with one hand I'm hanging on to my dough, just holding it, pulling it back. doesn't have to be too thin. It's not a tortilla. And you really only want to roll one, one or two at a time. So I'm going to put my pan on. All right, now, move you out of the way. And I'm going to, I've got a clean tea towel. I've got a clean tea towel, clean tea towel and a dinner plate. So I'm opening up my clean tea towel because we're going to wrap our naan in this once they're cooked. All right. I'm just got a chicken, naan, bread. All right. Now we don't need oil, but you want a medium heat. So no oil and a medium heat. Now remember they've got yogurt in them. Oh, I love that, Julia. I love that so much. <laughs> so if everyone can see what Julia is doing, she's rolling her roll, her nans just with a bottle. So nothing fancy does exactly the same thing. Love it. I had never, until I met Mia, who does some of our classes, 
she does that all the time. She said, oh, rolling pins, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> all right, so then I'm popping my naan bread into my pan. I'm starting to get little bubbles on my naan bread. Perfect. All right. Probably turned it a bit too early. <laughs> All right, so I'm starting to get some bubbles come up there. I'm not sure whether you can see it in my OV camera because it's gone off Zoom now. We can see. Great, 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 great. Uh, oh. This just makes me happy. <laughs> so I've got some little brown dots there. That's what we're after. We're after little brown dots, and then it starts to get all fluffy and puffy. But you probably need to adjust the temperature as you go along because it'll start to get hot, then it'll burn. We don't want burnt naan. We just want beautifully cooked naan, and I've got some fabulous little air pockets coming along. Oh, look at that. Oh, love it. Right. But how many will that make, Beth? Well, I've made... So you can made that size which is like a small dinner plate size. Okay. But the more, the, more you, um, the more that you make, the smaller that they are. Yeah, yeah, okay, gotcha. Unless you doubled the recipe. Unless you double the recipe, correct. Yeah. correct. Which we haven't done. No. <laughs> okay. So mine done, happy with that. There's a nice little golden little bits, so I'm going to put them straight into my tea towel. And that stops them going hard. And then I just put my next one on. And we repeat the process. Fantastic. So once you've done, you can take your chicken out and either slice it up. And then you want to add a little drizzle of yogurt. And that'll make it nice and creamy as well. So you can add some yogurt. And that says that in step 12, uh, step 13, add some salt and ripple through some yogurt. And then if you want to serve it with some lemon, I've got some coriander here or parsley, and then Bob's your uncle. Fantastic. All right, you sorted, Alana?